Hey, Moliere, I just saw it. I am so disgusted by that. But I tell you what, you keep your head up. Sometimes doors close, but it's got to be something at the end of this rainbow for you. You work too hard. You're dedicated. I appreciate you for everything. That was plum dirty. That was dirty. But don't get disgusted. I'm telling you, it's got to. It's going to be something for you. It's going, and it's going to be for you and you only. You don't have to partner with nobody. It'll be all yours. So I don't know, darling. I tell you. Well, you have a good evening, and call me whenever, and I'll talk to you later. Podcast, folks. I'm your host, Molia Dimash, and um, what you just heard was um, Chantel Grace's response to um, the video that I made where I was addressing how uh, we were initially supposed to oversee the uh, Citizens uh, Oversight Committee for the Department of Corrections. I played that for a reason. Okay. That was her response to how things transpired. Okay, now um, someone from the Florida Cares organization, the nonprofit group that I spoke of, reached out to me and um, you know uh, addressed how you know she um, accepted that video, and I, I, I completely understand and I, I appreciate that uh, you did that. Um, I have nothing against the Florida Cares organization. Uh, the thing is, um, I had to address Florida Cares because Florida Cares, the name is being assigned uh, to the bill that was uh, everything that I worked for to to um, get that bill in place. Uh, Florida Cares name is assigned to that now. And that's really the only reason that I addressed Florida Cares in that video. Um, the thing is, you know, there's no way that Florida Cares could have knew that um, uh, they, they couldn't have known anything that I discussed with Diane Hart or that I discussed with Chantel Grace or anything about how that whole plan was originally supposed to go down. There's no way they could have knew. My, that, my, my whole argument was about how Diane Hart handled the situation. That's all that was. But Florida Cares was a part of the equation. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's like, imagine three people go into the woods hunting and one is a trapper and two are hunters. And one of the trappers goes into the woods with, uh, one of the, the, the hunters goes in the woods with the trapper. And he says, you trap the deer, I'm gonna shoot it. The trapper sets up the deer trap, traps the deer. Another hunter who's not with them kills the deer. And instead of the trapper saying, look, I set this up for me and my friend, the trapper tells the hunter that killed the deer, oh, let's chop this up and let's divide it. You see what I'm saying? Instead of saying, oh, we had an original plan going on. You, you see what I'm saying? That's just a, uh, that, that, that's a different way to look at it, you know, hunting. But um, aside from that, you know, I, I just hope that, uh, you know, Florida Cares didn't, take that as like a personal insult you guys were just a part of the equation um unbeknownst to you it's not your fault um it, it was anything i said about cutthroat individuals and shady politicians and all that i was specifically referring to diane hart let me just make that clear so with that out of the way today's segment um introduces a new series called surviving keith turner now, I was already investigating uh, more mysterious deaths that I wanted to get to and uh, some other things concerning uh, prison life that I wanted to inform the public about. But uh, a friend of mine on Facebook sent me uh, the documents from uh, Keith Turner's. Uh, they, they sent me this man's uh, disciplinary history from Department of Corrections and I started to read it and I'm like, wow. There's no way this is just going to be out there and people say, oh, he was a bad guy. We're going to get into the specifics and it's way too much to cover in one segment. So we're going to go 
uh, piece by piece. This is gonna be a series called Surviving Keith Turner. And uh, we're gonna go over some things because as I started to read it, my jaw just dropped. Um, we're gonna talk about a few things, but there's one particular thing that uh, kind of got at me. And we'll get to that at the end because it's dead serious. So um, apparently, um, all of this started back when he was an officer. And remember I told you guys, in the Department of Corrections, the worse of a piece of cheese you are, the quicker you go up in rank. You know what I mean? Like that stuff, like if you guys haven't read the book, I give so many examples of how the bad guys get the promotion. Stuff I seen with my own eyes. Um, officers I personally interacted with. You know what I mean? This stuff is all coming from uh, my personal experience. And if you want an A1 game on prison culture, to where you have the same understanding that I have, you gotta read that book. But um, uh, he, he, th th this whole thing starts when back when he was an officer and he made it all the way uh, to be a lieutenant. So apparently in uh, 2009, he gets a write up because he was leaving notes under an inmate's pillow, an inmate named Destiny Washam. So apparently, you know, he was, he, before he started raping the inmate, so he might have already been raping him before this, but I guess that this was his game. He write a note saying, you know, I think you're beautiful or, you know, however he kick his game, stick it underneath her pillow. And if she accepts, then, you know, they start to barter for sexual favors. And um, apparently she wasn't with it. So they submit a, a, a request to the warden and to the inspectors, absolutely nothing was done about it, but they did file an incident report. Um, it, the, the, the disposition of the incident report didn't even uh, imply that he was disciplined for this. They found the notes, they read the notes, washed it away. So later on down the line, um, I guess, uh, you know, he, He's feeling his way around the women's prison, trying to figure out how he's gonna get in where he fits in. And um, there was another female inmate named Karen Fox, another one of his victims. Um, my guess is that uh, something, th 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 this appears to be personal. And you know, with him you know, being this guy who just sticks letters underneath women's pillows, my guess is this. He put a note underneath her pillow and she rejected his advances. They wrote her a bogus DR like they always do. So they put this woman in handcuffs and they're escorting her to confinement. And out of the blue, 10 witnesses testified to this. While she was in handcuffs being escorted to confinement, this man just comes out of the blue and tackles her to the ground while she's in handcuffs for no reason. Tell me that wasn't personal. So, you know, for some reason, he felt like he just needed to tackle a woman already restrained. And I personally believe that had something to do with those notes he was sliding under these women's pillows. So he gets uh, down the line a couple more years. The next write up was in 2014 with inmate Nicole Campbell. Now, this one, I absolutely believe that this is how this happened. Uh, word for word, she alleges that she was in the chow hall and um, she got caught talking. She grabbed her food tray. He took her tray from her and told her to get out of the chow hall and go back to the dorm because she was talking a lot. I can't count how many times that happened to me in prison. Just, just for, and how many times I've seen this happen to people. Like that's what they do. Like if you get, if you come into the chow hall and you get caught talking, this is not. A, a predator Turner uh, type of deal. This is all correctional officers. All correctional officers do this shit. If you get caught talking, you're not eating. And for you guys who don't, uh, you know, send money to your to your relatives or people that you love that's in prison, that's why it's important. You know, it's not important just so that you know people are more comfortable in prison. They starve inmates every day, every meal. If you uh, if you're trying to tuck in your shirt before you come out of the dorm to get uh, in line to go to child, they'll slam the door in your face. You miss your meal. If you don't have nothing in your locker, you're going to be starving 
until the next meal. And if the same officer's still there, they're gonna do it again. That's what they do. She um, had the audacity to write a grievance about it. And um, Turner was still not disciplined for this. So we move on now. Later on in 2014, Lowell Correctional Institution gets a phone call from the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office. They contact the inspectors there and they say, look, um, we have an inmate here who is informing us that the officers are trading cigarettes and contraband for sex. So this inmate, uh, Valerie Mills, um, she tells the, the, the sheriff's deputies that um, Sergeant Q, uh, Sergeant Turner, these two guys are, are, are and, and if you're familiar with uh, some of the, you know, more deadly news concerning a lower correctional institution, you're very acquainted with Sergeant Q. And uh, we'll talk about him in a later installment. But um, this uh, inmate Mills, she's telling them that Sergeant Q and uh, Sergeant Turner, they're exchanging cigarettes for sex. They're hiding cigarettes in a flower bed outside of the dorm. And uh, they're giving it to the inmates in exchange for oral sex. So she talks about an inmate named Cindy P. And uh, Cindy P refuses to make a statement. Now, they, they come and they, they interview her and they ask her, you know, is, is are these officers raping you? Are they uh, coercing you into having sex for contraband and things like that? She refuses to make a statement. So Sergeant Q and um, Sergeant Turner, they were there were witnesses saying, you know, we see them taking the girls into the laundry room and doing this and doing that. None of the women are willing to testify about this. None of them are willing to make a statement. So guess what? The inspectors dropped these investigations. So later on down the line, um, they get another anonymous request. And they're saying that uh, Officer Jason West, um, food service uh, personnel, Jason Anderson and Sergeant Turner are continuing this prostitution ring inside of the prison. So Jason West uh, apparently was uh, putting money on the account of inmate Caitlin Mackey and he was giving her jewelry. Jason Anderson, he was the guy in food service and he was having sex with inmate Olga Datzer, right? Now, these are all allegations. Now, check this out. These are all allegations. So, Jason West is supposedly, there's a paper trail that'll show him uh, depositing money on um, Caitlin Mackey's account. And, you know, Jason Anderson is, you know, he's purchasing jewelry for inmate Datzer. Now, in the same complaint, um, they're saying that Turner was having sex five to six times a day with inmate Alana Blair. Now, what stood out the most to me about this particular incident is that um, there's a, 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 a act that was signed into law called the Prison Rape Elimination Act. You guys heard me talk about that before in a past video. The Prison Rape Elimination Act applies to every prison in the United States of America. It's not just a Florida thing. So, you know, when there's like real serious concerns that there was some type of uh, sexual predatory behavior, a PREA investigation uh, is commenced. Now, out of all of the complaints that I read on this man, um, this is the only one that was assigned a PREA number the incident with him and uh, Lana Blair. Now check this out. There was no Priya incident for Jason West and Jason Anderson. They swept those under the rug, but there was something very specific about the incident with uh, Keith Turner and Lana Blair. They found some evidence. There was something that convinced them that this was serious enough to start a Priya investigation. They started a pre-investigation and guess how they disposed of it. They put these women in confinement. 
right, under investigation. And for those of you who've been to prison, you know you'd be better off getting a DR before you go to confinement under investigation. Because you get a DR, at least you know I'm going to be in here two, three months. Uh, Pre-investigation is indefinite. Indefinite. So, um, they lock these women up under a uh, 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 prior investigation. And guess how they resolved this issue? They gave them Priya packets. That was the disposition. They gave them Priya packets. A, a packet saying, look, this is the Prison Rape Elimination Act. This is how you should shower. You should pick a time to shower where nobody's around and you should not accept candy when it's put on your bunk. The Priya, uh, the Priya packets pretty much tell inmates how not to get raped by other inmates. You know what I mean? They get a Priya packet and boom, these guys just got away with running a prostitution ring. So... Turner, while the um, the incident with him and Lana Blair was uh, raising some eyebrows, it got a Priya uh, number assigned to it, and they disposed of it by giving these girls Priya packets. So, you know, it, it, it got me wondering, you know, th there's no way that the inspectors were not down with this. You know, you got this man with this long trail, and you got so many witnesses enough witnesses i mean think about it like this he's he he's out on bond right now he just went to jail for allegations against him right from two young girls okay they said that years ago he molested them when they were seven or eight why are these allegations given the same credence from adult women you have women saying, hey, this is what's going on in the prison. I'm grown enough. I have the wherewithal to describe to you how this happened. Uh, there's physical evidence. You know what I mean? As a matter of fact, in the case of Lana Blair, they said that uh, she ended up pregnant. She got pregnant by this guy. And that's probably why um, they took it serious enough to give it that Priya number because uh, she was missing her periods in prison you know what I mean she's not having peers in prison so somebody did something and if his name is coming up and witnesses are saying it you have to take it serious they swept it under the rug probably paid for her abortion made her kill that baby so um, that was probably the most incriminating case for him with uh, Lana Blair and um, the inspectors helped him sweep that underneath the rug Whoever was in charge of that pre-investigation swept that under the rug. So I get further down into this man's disciplinary history and I see the oddest thing. Inmates Shanice Dukes and Rodnisha Moore are, um, they go to some officers and they complain about inmate Amanda Thomas. Amanda Thomas. So they're saying that um, they're, 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 they're implying that Turner is having a relationship with Amanda Thomas. And um, they do this, you know, I guess they're friends of Amanda Thomas. They don't inform Amanda Thomas that they're doing this. They just go behind her back and tell her. Now, I know Amanda Thomas personally. And uh, for those of you guys who I used to chat with on uh, Facebook in those groups, um, you probably remember a time where I said I, I had a friend who was at Lowell and I wanted to bring her here to my studio and do an interview with her about her experiences at Lowell. It was Amanda Thomas. I can literally go and pick her up right now, bring her to my studio or go to her house and do an interview there and get to the bottom of this. And that's what I plan on doing. The reason I didn't bring her on when I was initially talking about that is because she just had a baby. And, um, well, she was pregnant at the time and uh, she was... Realest, most genuine, awesome human beings I know. And, uh... I would love to hear what she's got to say about this, the rest of the story. So um, I'm probably going to 
go check up on her and see if she's willing to talk about this. And if she is, you'll see it right here on the Convict Podcast. But um, that blew my mind. You know what I mean? I'm like, wow. You know what I mean? She 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 did. She told me about some of her experiences at Lowell, but it was more like convict talk. It wasn't me as a journalist or an investigator going to her saying, look, tell me about this. No, we chopped it up about prison and how that made us stronger and what we plan to do moving forward. And, um, you know, I, I, I know her personally, so we talk about a lot of personal stuff. And um, I'm just going to you know, see if she's willing to come on the Convict Podcast and give that exclusive interview. And uh, if that's the case, y'all prepare for it. So, um, you know, this guy's disciplinary record is so long. It, 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 it's, it's, you know, I'm not going to go through that whole thing in one segment. So this will conclude the first installment of Surviving Keith Turner. Um, he got a woman pregnant and the inspectors acted like they didn't uh, have any evidence about that. you know, preying on women. He's lurking the streets right now, folks. You know what I mean? We, I mean, apparently Marion County Sheriff's Office had enough evidence to believe he was doing this to children. Countless women are saying he was doing it to them in the streets and they gave this man a bond. So, um, criminal justice system. Uh, what are we going to do with it, folks? Uh, y'all gonna uh, vote for me to be the president so I can fix all of this. You know, I ain't old enough to run for president yet, but when I am, uh, we'll talk about it. 